Well, welcome back to my Ford Transit campervan build, and this time, hopefully, it's a less techy episode than the recent ones, and it's fit in the kitchen. So hopefully I'm going to get the fridge in, um, the sink and the hob in place, not plumbed in or get all the gas sorted, and the overall worktop fitted. So, worktop-wise, I have gone for a just a Wix oak butcher block style um, worktop. It's a thinner 28mm one, and that is going to go on top of here. This side isn't going to have one, it's going to have the bed on it. However, the reason these are on here is I made a slight measuring error. Um, and at the minute, if, if the worktop was just in the lower one, it's a little bit too low and, it in, and the cooker interferes with a few things. So I've just added these extra 27mm battens, or I was just about to add them. And that jacks the uh, height up just enough that everything sort of fits. It's only another 27mm. Um, and you won't actually see this because there's still get a face frame to be built over it, so it's still going to be covered up. Right, so let's get cracking on. So just to give you an idea of positioning, this is generally what I'm going for. There's a three hob burner here, but I'll show you afterwards. My issue was that this wasn't, this was about two centimeters too deep and was hitting these bars when it gets cut out. So it's gonna be raised up a little bit more when it sits on the actual work surface. That's generally the plan. And then to give me a bit more count space, I'll use the cutout for this as it has actual lid as well. That's the plan. So now I can get this assembled. Let's start screwing it all together. Oh, I apologize as it is getting starting to get a bit dark. Generally what the plan is, is this is gonna be a straight edge from sort of here all the way along. And then it's gonna come in here, come back out again, just follow sort of shape of that pillar and then get cut off there and line with the back door. I'm about to make the cuts on the work surface. So I made a little jig so I can basically hold this and slide my circular saw along because I don't have a track saw. So I've um, post having a flush I've left about a five mil gap because work surfaces like this will expand and contract with heat, especially being in a van where it's going to be hot and cold. It's actually quite a lot, so having that little bit of leeway for it to expand into is quite important. Right, now well, let's get cutting. I'll probably finish the very bottom bit off of the jigsaw. So, this is me currently trying to get the shape of the flare and then the pillar and then the door all cut. So I'm going to do the whole saw for the radius corners and then I'm just going to use the jigsaw with leaving a bit of extra room and then use the rear out a bit to uh, flush trim it up to make it all nice and smooth. My safety goggles have disappeared again. Most of it I've now trim. Unfortunately, I made a little balls up there, so I'm gonna have to take another probably two mil off the end of this to fix that little mistake. Right, it's time to see how well the worktop fits or doesn't fit. You're really happy with that. Need to get it lined up. But... So these gaps are all for expansion, and when the upholstery wall goes on here, it's another five mil, and then a few mil for the foam. So actually, really happy how that turned out. Right, getting there. Definitely a stressful bit. So this is the template which came with it. We're using the offcuts at the back as sort of 
somewhere to stop any sort of water or splashback sort of running down the back and sides. I'll trim this one to be flat as well. This is remarkably close to the edge of here though. So the actual, this is the, the cut line I need to make for the cooker. And this is actually the edge of the cooker. And it is very, very close to the edge. A bit more than I would like actually. Um, yeah, some figuring out to do. Right, so although I like this cooker, it's just not going to work in this gap because this comes in, this comes in slightly, and I have to set it forward a little bit. There's just too little material here for me to be happy, so I'm probably going to sell it and find a, a way smaller one to go in that gap. So I'm going to bevel the top and bottom edge, um, maybe to stop chips and for me hurting myself on it. Pretty. Pretty happy with that. So this is the underside which I'm just going to treat and seal with some Osmol or, or what I've got left of it and then I've got a new tin of a slightly different shade coming for the top. But there isn't actually a lot left. Right, sorry there hasn't been loads of filming in this but I'm currently trying to install the classic fridge everyone goes for which is the Dometic CRX50. Um, and I've just brought a little plinth for it to sit on but it is sitting above the heater. But I wanted to just give it a good three to four centimetres above the heater. And I'm using the internal screws in, to mount it to. So that's going to sort of sandwich it in there and then it will be bolted through, screwed through. I'm almost finished the blimp for the fridge. So at the minute, it sits on this 18mm ply, which is screwed down to here and here. This support joins up to here. And inside the fridge, which you'll see in a bit, is there are holes which you can drill from the inside of the fridge, um, which is going to attach it and permanently fix it on there. And then I'll probably run a batten across the top just to seal it up. Off the back of it, sitting on sort of stilts. It is above the diesel heater, but there is a reasonable amount of space underneath there. Nice air gap, which I don't see as an issue. Um, just bear in mind it is a 12 volt compressor fridge, it's not a gas fridge so it doesn't need the external, external ventilation out of the back. It does need a bit of clearance which it has got, but it doesn't need external ventilation out of the back. So uh, well, let's do a test fit and get the rest of the bits all lined up. Um, if anyone's wondering, that's what it looks like at the back of one of them. I have no idea how one of these fridges works, I presume it's some sort of magic. Let's probably plug in the uh, wires first. So this is the the wires it comes with. So there isn't anything wrong with the factory wiring. It's just because I am doing a slightly longer run and wiring it from the fuse box. I'm just going to up the factory uh, positive and negative wires to 6mm. Uh, so I'm just going to do up basically these wires. Oh god, they really don't want to come out. Right, well, I should see, probably check what that was before I did that. So the minute I'm trying to figure out where this piggyback connector went and I think that the main positive piggybacks this, although there is a piggyback connector in here, I think looking back at the uh, the video this doesn't actually connect to anything. But on the side of, the, of it is the wiring diagram and that doesn't show the main positive coming in piggybacking at all, it shows the next one down piggybacking. So I'm not really sure. I'm going to presume there's no difference of it picking backing off the main pods because this is also going to be the pods going to either the fan or the, or the compressor itself. So 
I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to get it in, um, plug it in, turn it on, make sure it's working, and then uh, I will probably screw it in. Just make sure all of this, what I've just made, works. Well, that's where it's going to go. Um, I am going to just turn it on. See it works. Well, I plugged it in. The I, the main isolating for appliances is currently off. Currently on. It's currently draining about three amps, but that's because the compressor is getting the fridge up to temperature and then it will, presume it will pop down to a lower usage. So this might look like it actually sticks out quite far, but we're going to be building a face frame, which will probably come to out there, and then the doors are going to be on front of that, so it's probably going to make it sit quite flush, which is um, quite a nice visual look. So at the minute I need to attach the top into there, screw that piece into there, and the fridge is mounted. So this is how mounting the fridge works. You pop off these and it reveals a little hole or a depression. But you've actually got to drill a pilot hole in it. There's no and there's no sign of anything on the outside of it either, so I guess you just gotta a hole. Although people have said use self tappers, so I might do a pilot hole and then self tappers. Hopefully, I'm using one of these screws. Okay. One of my Craig ones. So that should go nicely into the into the 18 mil. And to finish it off, it just gives you some new little caps to put on instead. So, best to show you the features of the fridge, and then we can move on uh, to getting the worktop finally fitted. So, I've loaded it up for your average life living in a van, where it is, at the moment, mostly beer. Um, you can fit a two-litre soft drink bottle in there. A whole variety of beers, big cans, double stack little cans, all the important things. Um, other essentials like cheese. In the drawers at the bottom, you can move most of the drawers around. It's also got a freezer compartment at the top. And so with the freezer compartment, you can either take that completely out and have the entire fridge as a fridge, or you can have the freezer compartment in. Oops. Shooting ice everywhere. And have it uh, as a fridge freezer. Let's also show you over here. And on the inside, you've got a little indicator light telling you, because the fridge door's open in a minute, the compressor's turned on. And you can also cycle through how cold you want it. I'm still playing around with these settings. Well, that's pretty much it. Rather happy with it. The door also latches, so no worries about it opening. And if you left the fridge empty and you're leaving it turned off for a while, you could put the, the vent lock on and it locks in position, but the fridge is actually still open for if you had the um, Fridge turned off and you just wanted to leave it open. But yeah, very happy with it. Right, so what I've got to do is I've got to sand this back. It comes with a finish, but it's still reasonably rough. So I'm going to sand it with 240 grit and then I'm going to do the, uh, the oil on it afterwards. So, like multiple times before, I'm going to be using Osmo oil again, but I'm using Osmo top oil this time, which is specially designed for wooden kitchen tops. Um, I'm going to use the Acada Acasis 
It's like, it makes it slightly dark, I can't remember what that says. Acacia, that was it. I'm going to use like a, a foam fleecy applicator. So I need to mount the worktop and as wood expands such a worktop, uh, I need to mount it in such a way that there is the ability for it to sort of expand even though it's screwed down. So imagine these are my timber battens below. I'm going to be using a bigger hole, probably something like a, a 10mm drill bit. Screw through so the screw itself is loose. It has a, um, a repair washer holding it in place and then that into the table. So if the table expands and contracts, it's just got that little few millimetres of movement to go in. So at this moment in time, I'm not 100% sure how many screws I really want to use to have it, uh, to have it in. And I might potentially take it out again to when I cut the sinks out. So I think I'm probably going to do just two along each of these battens. So eight screws in total. The big five mil screws holding it in. And if further, the more in the future, I can always add some more in these sections. Um, I'm just going to use a pot to capture all the uh, the wood chips because things have got are in place now. Just to show you the example of like sort of the free floating screws. That and there screwed to the bit of wood, but option for expansion. So I'm just going to pre drill the holes on this as well. Where's my steel ruler? So this is uh, just with the mounting system in, just using the repair washers and the screws with the holes in and it's absolutely sturdy, it doesn't feel like it's going anywhere, even though there's play in the screw holes, there is no margin for this sliding around at the minute, which is good. Well, I'm pretty much going to end it there, I'm really happy with the work top and I was a little bit over ambitious getting the sink and hob in, especially since I made a small calculation with my um, miscalculation with measuring for the hob. You know, it happens, it's fine. I'm going to replace it, sell that old one, and replace it with a smaller one. Um, and nor all the lighting which has suddenly appeared at the end of the video, um, and all the other bits and bobs. Um, you can see the Philips Hue light strips all appear in an upcoming video as well as the van internet and the other things going on in there. But that pretty much is going to sum up the video. Really happy with how the colour of this worktop works out. Um, and the, the slight darkening I did on it. It is on the heavy side, um, but I did go for the thinner 26mm or 28mm um, compared to like the 41s you normally see. Uh, on the other side, I'm not going to mirror it with a with another one because it's not necessary because the bed's going there. I might just either have something completely different or something which visually looks similar. Yeah, that sums it up. So once again, thank you very much for joining me. If you want to message me, feel free and find me on Instagram. Do it there. And I'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye.